All right, you are still watching Ways National Wine and Cheese Day is a day that dates <laughs> that celebrates the ultimate pairing of cheese and wine. For a lot of people, there's nothing uh, that goes together better than a great glass of wine and some premium quality cheese. Tell this to my, my <laughs> brother-in-law. And then they chop cheese. Yeah. Ah, if you see some kind of cheese, wait for go bring her. The stench that will hit so, you. So it will tell you say that this is the quality. Nah, I'm so not the French fan. have <laughs> a unique, unique perspective and love for cheese. Um, so I always loved a good, very mature cheddar or Leicester. But when I started to work with a lot of Europeans, that's when I sort of expanded my range of cheese. I mean, I don't think that there, there, there are few things for me, food-wise in life, that's better than a good quality brie, camembert, gouda. I mean, the list just goes on. And then, I mean, pair it with... So first of all, I like cheese with fruits. So I like cheese with grapes. Mm. Um, and then, of course, I mean, wine comes from grapes. It's just a step up. But... It's it, their flavor profiles that really just work together. Really? So if you and I'm not again when you're talking having cheese on its own with you know a bit of a accoutrement like you know some crackers or some um, fruit or wine you do need good quality cheese. I'm not talking bargain basement cheddar that is you know the kind that you use for macaroni and cheese or whatever. No, we're talking good cheese. You no. Know, Cheese is stinky, real good blue that cheese. That is stinkiness, the yeah. goodness. I said, when, <laughs> when my brother in you know, law will bring some kind of cheese out like this, I say, he said, What well, try it? This is really nice. Yeah. You know, they are speaking his French. I say, Uncle, keep it in one corner. I'm yeah. <laughs> not chopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've tried some really nice ones, you mm. know, because my sister has, you know, she has, you know, sometimes she just said, Well, just try it. You know, and me, I'm actually open to trying. Mm. But I've really tried some really beautiful ones. But it's just that those yeah. ones that are very old, are, what do you think? So yeah, I can't tea. taste anything. A is really that? nice umami. Like it's it just a gorgeous flavor. Oh, it is where with you. We will oh. take you back to Europe. <laughs> the crumbly, stinky blue cheese. I mean, come on. It's just amazing. Or still to I mean, come on. Like, I could go on. Eh? I can see. <laughs> hey, it's the funny Lebico. What did you buy for us in the news? <laughs> I can see that Uti was having a ball explaining. I'm telling you. She was. She was. <laughs> well, my story is a feel-good story, and it is about the Chibok girl who actually um, escaped when they were being transported to the um, to the forest. So I, it's it's such a wonderful story to to read, and I just had to bring it on air. And it says. Um, a feel good is it, it says one of the Chibo girls who escaped Boko Haram abduction gets engaged to her man in the US. And uh, one of these girls, her name, the girl's name is uh, Joy Bishara. She actually did this in 2014. If you recall, that was when the girls were actually adopted. It's such, a, it's such an amazing thing that it's. It's years has gone by since this thing happened. And she did this in um, America. She's actually engaged to her Caucasian lover in the US. Recall that in April 2014, a Boko Haram members invaded the school and adopted a total of 276 female students aged from 16 to 18. 57 of these girls immediately escaped following the incident by jumping from the trucks on the way to the forest. Ms. Bishara is one of these ladies or young girls that escaped. And afterwards, she actually relocated to the U.S. Now imagine if she was not able to, you know, escape. She would have been just like any other Boko Haram um, one of the girls that Victim, were yeah. actually adopted, yes. Happy for and her. the fate of those girls today, some of them were able to come back home. Some of them, we don't want to go into the details of what they had encountered. But still, we still have some people or some girls that are still missing and they've not found their way back home. And it's appalling and sad that, again, Nigeria has failed those girls. Uh, but it's also... Interesting to understand that this young girl that actually escaped and the other girls that escaped we were able to change their fate. So again, we have the um, 
we have the right to teach our children to learn how to survive or have some survival skills when they find themselves in an environment such as what the young lady um, found herself. So um, I think I'm happy that she was able to actually escape and uh, find something good about her. Uh, her life afterwards, after the Boko Haram incident. Hmm. Okay, happy for her. Congratulations to her on her engagement. And um, it's really sad that we still have some girls that are still in captivity. Still, still in captivity. Mm. Very sad. All right, so um, Jella, what did you find for us quickly? Um, okay, so headline is um, artificially um, ripened fruits may cause cancer heart failure by NAFDAQ. So this is like a public um, service announcement to say that um, we should be very wary of um, the artificially you know, ripened fruits that we take. Um, examples are mango, bananas, um, plantain, um, guava, orange, grapes, you know, that um, this thing is actually forcefully ripened with um, calcium carbide, which is very dangerous to health. Um, NAPDAC says that um, it's, um, it has put in measures in place to do a sensitiz um, sensitization around the country so that um, people are aware of um, the, the detriments, you know, of eating or even the people selling it. Again, because I know that um, in Nigeria, we really don't have, um, we're not big on storage, you know, so most of these items are perishable. So when they come, people want to quickly make sales. Again, people won't buy what is not ripe. And then when you forcefully ripen this fruit, they're actually sweeter, you know, they are mm. softer, yes. I don't think so. Oh, I mean, so that's... I've had experience mm. with plantains, most especially, mm. right? I bought plantain from the market and I've gotten plantain from the farm. Mm. The plantain that I've gotten from the farm, actually, I love the process because, mm. okay, if I have a bunch of plantain, let's say we have like maybe 20 or 35, um, what mm. do they call the plantain, whatever. Bunch, yeah. Uh, pieces on pieces the bunch. Pieces yeah, on oh, the okay. bunch, right? It ripens very progressively. Like yeah. you see, maybe today two ripens, mm. another two, it doesn't ripen all at once. Mm. But once you buy from the market, right, I struggle to buy in bulk because... As you are just dumping it there, the whole thing just ripens. Okay, so but that's I have the seen process. that progression mm. with mm. the ones that is directly from the farm mm. that was not nothing like the carbide and all of mm -mm. that was was mm. applied to it. Mm. So I actually and I think that those ones are even sweeter, in my own opinion, than the ones that you know I buy from the, the market. I think that's because you are very health conscious and you have um, thought your palais, you know, to to acquire oh, or yeah okay. to be cool some That's people yeah not, exactly yeah, some people are sweet. really sweet too they want things really sweet so, very, so those artificially exactly. ones, artificially ripened ones are yeah ones. okay you know so i mean it, it is what it is because what i was just going to say that from the time that i learned about this carbide thing mm -hmm. um i prefer to buy plantain so very rarely mm -hmm. will i buy um, the ripened bunches yeah. because you just hit the nail on the head. If you buy a huge big green bunch, it won't all ripen at once. At once, yeah. But when you see these um, plantain on the road, they look really pretty, yellow, and they're actually very sweet. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you take the taste of what you've ripened yourself, it never gets to that sickly sweetness. Yeah. Mm. You know, so that's where the difference. So is she is right. Mm. Um, because when you buy a green bunch, it will ripen a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. It's not all at once. Mm. So it's not to say that every seller does it, but it's a normal practice because, again, we all want nice-looking, yeah. bright, colorful yeah. fruits and yeah. vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. My story yeah. is interesting. Mm. Wanna help me? Let me first of all do the screen grab. So there are about 660 staff at the Cardinal Refinery and Petroleum Company, 506 staff at the Portacot Refinery Company, 437 staff at Worry Refinery and Petrochemical Company. All of them earn about 136 billion naira in salaries without refining a drop yeah. of crude oil. This report was done by The Guardian. And if you go to that report, it is sickening, Uti. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's very sickening. Now, there are prospects that some allocation was done for the refining of the Port Harcourt refinery. But according to what the community and the eyewitnesses around there say, they say that um, at the rate that it is going, they are not sure that they will be able to meet the deadline of completion for that project. They should hire us, project managers. Maybe we have them tell them. 
But what was really sad for me eh, in this report was the losses that have been experienced, that have been incurred. Now, in 2020, total loss incurred by the refineries was seven, over 7 billion naira. September, right, it was um, seven, over 7 billion and 43 uh, million. In October, it was about 5.4 billion. In November, it went up to 5.9 billion. In December, it went up to 8.2 billion, all in 2020. What is the basis for that loss? Is I, know, it, it I can't never be knew yet. Alone. I never, I, they never tell me yet, but they say they kept a total of 1,701 staff. Do you understand? Even whilst this rehabilitation, especially in Portaco Refinery, was ongoing. Huh? Now, in 2021, about five point something billion. So, in total, the losses that have been incurred mm -hmm. is 136 billion naira. Is this no madness in this country? You see all these people that are busy going up and down saying they are protesting. They should go to NNPC and go and evacuate all those staff there because you don't get what the work going that they do. Now, they put us alongside um, Saudi Arabia, I think, or uh, is it Qatar now? They put us alongside those ones. Whilst we are recording losses, those companies are recording extreme, uh, what's it called? Um, profits. And profits. Profits. Why would they not record profits when those people, they know to the last drop of the crude oil, they can trace it and they know where the, the crude oil is going. Like, are we jokers in this country? We are jokers. Are you so now what has happened is that all this stuff that have been retained in NMPC, you see this increment of all these things that we are suffering as Nigerians. We are the ones subsidizing their lifestyle. Because I don't understand why you are a business person. You are suffering, you are incurring losses. And this is not small losses. You are incurring mm -hmm. losses in billions. And you are still keeping that stuff. On whose account? But what? I, I, I'm struggling with the annoyance that you are experiencing. Mm -hmm. This thing you are saying is in the entire public sector. Entire. We had a whole show about it now. Mm -hmm. Kuli Lawa sat here and gave Auntie, us a breakdown. Public sector, show they see small, small work that they do, they, they carry no, fire. So, what yeah. do an NPC they do? Eh, so they are, they are machinery, <laughs> they are machinery and things at the... It's a retirement at the, home. At the, yeah. um, the what they call it now? Hey. At the refineries, mm -hmm. right? They will tell you that they have work yeah. that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So my point is, if you're going to be this upset, don't stop at the refineries. The entire, I love the way um, um, Kule put it, where he says the entire public service is Nigeria's welfare system. Yeah. So the fact is, there are certain states where you don't understand why they have the number of, um, of staff that they have. At the federal level, there are some ministries that I, I would like to know what the Ministry of Special Duties does. Is it I domestic? Would like to, I would like to understand. Senior Special Advisor on Domestic. What do you no, mean I would like to understand <laughs> what <laughs> between EFCC, NFIU, we still have financial crime. Yeah. If you, there are still people getting scammed every day. So really and truly, if you're going to expel There's this, ICPC, if, EFCC. You're, if you're going to There's expel no this energy to be upset, just go clean across the board. Don't stop at the refineries. Yeah. I mean, no, the one way they annoy me now because all those are no concern. No, that's if not the one now, 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 all they suffer and we no. they buy, we they buy petrol at how no. much? But you that's see, I that get you. You are talking about I get you, but I just wanted the to vent. The refinery bill. That's I said. If you are going to vent, vent across board. Mm. You know, if you're going to explore the energy, do it a little wiser than the government is doing it. <laughs> so if you're going to complain, complain across board because all of these people, they are on our bill. You are. You are paying the, the money that should come into the infrastructure, the money that should come into corporate, into SMEs, to Better drive livelihood. the economy. Yes. To all of that money is being used Public to pay these people salaries. So that's why I said, be angry across board. Yeah. Don't stop at the refinery. Yeah. Come on. State yeah. by state. Some states, what are their, their, why do they have so many uh, state ministries? What's their idea? What are they doing? Right? So the, the truth of it is, we are sharing facts. We are sharing facts at state level where local governments are collecting money. Everybody got a slice of the cake. So if you're going to be angry, <laughs> let it be holistic. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Nigeria. It's so bad. Rather than la cry, just laugh. No. Mm -hmm. ah. Nigeria, <laughs> Nigeria cannot happen to me. I will frustrate Nigeria. You cannot frustrate me. <laughs> ah, no, you can't. How do you want like to frustrate me? Nigeria. When other you countries are experiencing... Look at, look at Saudi, uh, uh, Saudi oil uh, giants. 
Aramco, a, a what did they call them? Aramco. In his se se second quarter, they surged to $48.4 billion. But let me shock you. That is how much they are making. Up to 20, 25, uh, up from $25.5 billion earlier in the year. Sorry. Other countries that have, they have brains that are using the brains. Hold Do you up. understand? Hold on. Hmm. This, this report was 2020, right? It's not 2020, it was today. Oh, okay, today. So, remember that the past, the ex-president was the minister for... So there is that. Leave that matter. Exactly. Don't even go there again. So On just, that note. like Uti said, it's across board. Just exactly. Ha. Exactly. Talobwa. So, exactly. Oh, Talobwa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> just.